Okay, so I got the Streamliner in the garage, and it fits. We got about, I don't know, eight inches in the front, a little bit of space in the back to walk around. That's freaking fantastic, because the old garage, once I got the Streamliner in, the doors had to be open, and I couldn't walk around the back of the bike, so super stoked about that. Bad thing is, it's not turning on, and kind of expected some weird things. I actually checked the voltage on the battery. We got 376, so I'm feeling real good about that, because that means we don't have to do anything to the battery, but... We're not getting voltage back to the motor. So did a couple checks here and I'll show you some footage of a roll of this, but basically um, I'm closing the negative contactor when I turn the bike on and that seems to be clicking just fine. And then closing the pre-charge resistor um, and contactor and that clicks just fine. And then I checked voltage across the bus and there's no voltage. So what happens is during the pre-charge, it should essentially uh, ramp voltage so you have kind of a throttle there which is your resistor which allows you to slowly push voltage into the capacitors inside the motor if you don't do that and you just close your main contactor you're hitting it with a huge amount of inrush current which damages the contactor so i don't know when and this probably was like a sneaking problem that didn't show up in bonneville thank goodness but i probably roasted my uh, pre-charge resistor and you can do that by running the bike with the pre-charge resistor closed and you're basically pulling uh, max current through it. It's not rated for constant discharge at 400 volts um, and you'll roast it. And then I was kind of just didn't know it was working or not and just assuming it was and hammering my main contact every time I turned it on. So thank goodness that was an issue at the salt because I don't think I would have been able to fix that, but we're here, we got time, let's do it. So first things first, this is my BDU, battery disconnect unit. And uh, what I'll show you here is that there's no voltage. It's in the off position. I should take my ring off, actually. <laughs> no ring. Okay, so this is my negative contactor. Right now we have broken the voltage. See how it's on the off? We've broken the voltage from the pack halfway, and we do not have live voltage across here. But you touch this, you're still uh, half pack voltage. So 170, not the best idea. So I'm not going to be touching this right now. I'm actually going to install some new covers after I do this install. So when I close this contactor, and closing means you are uh, closing the circuit or turning the switch on, kind of confusing, but <clears throat> we'll be using that for the rest of the time, we do get a continuity across these two poles. When that happens, it actually pushes this motor to ground of high voltage. Now, what comes next is this little guy right here, this guy right here, and this is called a mini tactor. It's usually meant for lower current. This is your pre-charge resistor. This is actually from a Tesla takeoff. Still some salt, goodness gracious. Um, this is a 23 ohm. Um, you can calculate these for the amount of time it takes to ramp your voltage up. Um, I don't care about that. If you're a consumer and you wanna get in your car and turn it on and go, you want a low ohm, high wattage resistor. That's what this is. Um, and that what happens with that is if you leave it on, it cooks itself and it dies. So I'm gonna replace this with something just from Amazon, a $10 part. It's a very high ohm resistor, which is 100 ohms. This is 23, so four times that. Should take time, four times as much time to ramp up the uh, voltage. Basically this, when you close this contactor, it goes through the resistor and then goes to the, but, the positive bus right here. This is the positive bus, runs through a main fuse, goes back to the main motor. So if I run a 100 ohm resistor here, it should take four times as much time, but I don't care because I'm out on the salt, chilling, and I ain't trying to get in and leave. So we're gonna pull out this guy. We're gonna replace it with the Amazon part. And we're also gonna pull this guy out and replace it. Now we're gonna replace it with one of these. Now this is actually what's on the bike. And this is like your old trusty um, contactor. If you work on cars, you may know that there's a thing called the starter solenoid or Diesel has the glow plug relay. These guys are meant to take a little bit more amps than your normal switch that you'd have. This one does a 200 amp, and that's the nominal continuous. Um, but it can take a much higher amp rating and pulses. This is what people would use for a long time. Uh, Kilovac, I mean, that's just, that's the old trusty. So that's what I have in there right now. Um, this one actually has an economizer on it. You can see the little box. It's a little bit more efficient. This guy doesn't. I don't care. It's missing it should be just fine. This is the, the equivalent of a starter solenoid on your truck or your car to push the amps out to your starter. Okay, 
So this is called the battery disconnect unit. There's my fuse, we already talked about this. I'm gonna be working on this, and in order to do that, I don't want high voltage across some of these terminals. Um, this, the two main battery leads come in here, and I've turned off my manual service disconnect. This splits the battery literally in two, meaning that these two pieces are no longer connected. There's still voltage over in this side, but I'm gonna be taking my fluke meter, and periodically checking the voltages across all this stuff anytime I make a major change. I'm working with no gloves, because I feel more comfortable with dexterity of no high voltage gloves, and I have a plastic ratchet from Harbor Freight. I actually really like these things. While this is still made out of metal, you can remove your hand from the circuit by having plastic, so. Just, uh, yeah, that's how we're going. I don't like filming this stuff usually because it's a distraction. I don't like distractions working on high voltage, but here we go. So we have eight volts between the two main leads. That means it's kind of a floating voltage. A little bit of capacitance leakage, that's normal. Go ahead and take some of this stuff off. What can happen here and what you need to be careful of is you have conductive metal parts like screws, bolts, and washers that need to stay away from this stuff. Now while you're removing this, you also have these little leads that connect to different things. So you have to be careful and usually I'll tape these off as I go. We'll see here. You just don't want those falling, touching ground, putting voltage where stuff is unexpected. And that's why you continue, anytime we unbolt something, we continue to check voltages. Another concern we have here is this guy is connected to my DC-DC. Um, if I had just turned this on and I uh, just turned it back off, you could have a capacitance across here. So checking voltages, even though the battery's not hooked up, there may be energy still in, in some caps in the system. So it's always good to put some tape around stuff. still off. I've installed the new BDU with the new contactor and the new pre-charge resistor hiding down there. I've actually tested it and everything's working great so it was a bad contactor and a bad resistor. So we're good to go on this. Keep moving forward I guess. So another thing that um, has been bothering the inspectors is that my seatbelts are like just the tiniest bit too far back, meaning that they are essentially um, hitting my soft bits and not going across my, my pelvis. So I've made these little quarter inch plates and they're basically going to move the seatbelt forward about an inch and a half. I have to weld these into the cockpit and there's a lot of wires and seatbelts and stuff. So I'm going to cover it up with a piece of cloth, um, hang myself in there and Lay down some beads. This will make them happy. That was a pretty hard weld. 
uh, but it looks pretty substantial, so. And you're on, you're on YouTube. Ah, YouTube! Learn how to safety wire, I mean, being a professional safety wire person. <laughs> okay, so we made it to El Mirage. It's extremely bright and dark. We've got the bike in the tent, got the tent up. We're doing some safety wiring, and we're not gonna run today. It's a two day event, but I showed up late on Saturday because I didn't know. And we're just gonna get the bike ready to go for tomorrow, try and see if we can do tech inspection and be ready to run our rookie runs tomorrow morning. Wrong lane? Yeah, no, yeah? Hey, you get up there! Go on, turn the GoPro on. I did it right. You got it again. Say jump? No, I think you go. Uh, you gotta go on that. You got your harness right? On the the harness. Yeah, I got it. There you go. 
130, the motorcycle streamliner. It's got cool little landing gear on the side, so it takes off. It's picks up its landing gear, it goes on down the road, or the course. Looks like an entertaining ride here. No data on this particular car or bike. Land gear is up. So you're done. How much left do I fix that? I gotta put a thing. Pressurize this cab, which means sealing really good in the back too. Because a lot of that dirt will come in from the back. Yeah. And, cool. and this. Buddy. You're welcome. I get it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Peel that sticker off. Yeah. And go get if you get yeah, when they tell you back, yeah. <clears throat> if they're still there, because you're the last run, you're it. Yeah. If they're still there, grab a timing slip, get Jill to sign it. Yeah. Go straight to registration. Bumps. Bumps. Thanks, Andy. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that, you have a number? 